This comes via AFP and alarabia.net. Mother spares life of son's killer with slap in Iran. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's those crazy Iranians. Oh, if somebody gets murdered, all they do is slap a guy in the face and they let him go. Well, no, the story is a little more complicated than that. And actually, we have a valuable lesson to learn from the Iranians here. We, the collectivized American people living under the American justice system, in terms of how this actually reflects real justice. Now, it is important to point out in America, we don't have a justice system. We have a legal system. It has nothing to do with justice whatsoever, except that it perverts justice and pretends to serve justice in order to allow the government to keep this racket going. A system based on justice would be based on self-ownership, restitution for victims, punishment that uh, is, is based on achieving uh, reparations or making victims whole, not on what punishment really is, which is, by definition, causing pain in order to change or manipulate someone else's behavior or provide some kind of revenge emotional gratification. Punishment is contradictory to any legitimate concept of justice. Because if you are hurting someone, not in order to defend yourself, or not in order to reclaim stolen property, you are hurting someone you are causing them pain or suffering to manipulate their behavior or to cause them pain or to give yourself some kind of emotional satisfaction, you are creating injustice. And obviously, well, that's 90% of the American legal system, right? An Iranian mother spared the life of her son's convicted murderer with an emotional slap in the face as he awaited execution with the noose around his neck. The dramatic climax followed a rare public campaign to save the life of Bilal, who at 19 killed another man, Abdullah Hossein Zadeh, in a street fight with a knife back in 2007. Now, it is important, it's important to point out, like, this guy hasn't, you know, completely gotten off the hook. It's not like, uh, you know, he killed a guy and then got slapped and that was it. No, seven years ago. So he's been either going through legal processes or in jail for most of that time. Sharg newspaper said police officers led Bilal to a public execution site in the northern city of Naushar as a large crowd gathered on Tuesday morning. Samare Alenajad, mother of the victim who lost another son in a motorbike accident four years ago, asked the crowd whether they know how difficult it is to live with an empty house. Bilal, black hooded and standing on a chair before a makeshift gallows, had the noose around his neck when Alinajad approached. She slapped him in the face and removed the rope from his neck, assisted by her husband, a former professional footballer. As she said, quote, I am a believer. I had a dream in which my son told me that he was at peace and in a good place. After that, all my relatives, even my mother, put pressure on me to pardon the killer. And she said, the murderer was crying, asking for forgiveness. I slapped him in the face. That slap helped to calm me down. Now that I've forgiven him, I feel relieved. Bilal said, quote, the slap was the space between revenge and forgiveness. I've asked my friends not to carry knives. I wish someone had slapped me in the face when I wanted to carry one. That was uh, said Bilal in an interview. Now, in America, what do we see in the application of the death penalty? Now, in, in, in Iran, I'm not trying to judge here the entire legal system. Obviously, it has its problems. It's a government-run system. They do kill people for messed up things as punishment. And there was a place, by the way, now under a system of justice, a, a, a truly you know, righteous system, there is a place for the death penalty. If you are completely, and I mean you as a society, as people, whoever it is addressing a murderer, someone who is a legitimate violent threat to society, you are incapable of, of isolating them from the rest of society. There's no other option. To, to, but in order to save the lives of, of other people, you have to kill this person. Okay. Fine. You better be damn sure you got the right guy. You better be damn sure they're guilty. You better be damn sure that this is the only option if you are going to so violate the rights of another as to kill them. But now that we live in, I don't know, the capable society that we live in, that we have for the last several hundred, maybe thousands of years, where we have had the architectural construction capability to build structures where we can keep someone alive, preserve the value of their life without, you know, with a reasonable reassurance that they're not going to escape. 
And by the way, yes, it, it, it's really kind of uh, a, a, a disgrace to government. If anything, a, 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 another reason why it, it is so invalid in doing this, that, that we have had this uh, ability for thousands of years, really, you know, since, since uh, brick and mortar and who knows? I mean, going way back, we have had the capability to build structures to house people where we can be reasonably sure that they are not going to escape. And yet prison breaks have happened under governments all the time because they are so fundamentally irresponsible to justice. They don't have any incentive to prevent people from escaping. In fact, they have an incentive to allow people to escape because it means more crime and it means an excuse for more government spending. Yeah, imagine that. So when we have the death penalty applied in the United States, what do we see? We see families of victims going into courtrooms saying, or, or, or watching execution saying, oh yes, that gave me, it gave me such relief, such release. Or yes, I felt that the justice was served because my family member's victor or murderer was, was killed by government. Do you see how sick that is as, as a means of vengeance or, or just how emotionally stunted we are as Americans by the measure of how we address the death penalty and justice in America from a perspective of vengeance? Now, it's certainly more rational to think, well, if we can preserve the life of someone, no matter how dangerous they are, if we can find value in that, if we can say, you know what, you have given up your right to self-ownership. You have, you, have you have committed such an egregious crime that we can now, as victims, claim ownership over you. If, if you could own someone that way, legitimately, because they had done that, would you really kill them? Or would you want to preserve their life and allow them not only to, to continue to live, but to be productive and serve you? Now, in a real system of justice, you could have this where, you know, a perpetrator, someone who commits such a violent crime, maybe is not uh, simply killed and discarded, but is put to good use for society in, in a cage, isolated, and allowed to work to benefit the, the victims, to, to work to make them whole. I mean, does it, does it really make your life better when someone who has wronged you is punished? If you're sick, twisted in the way that so many Americans are, yes, you might get some strange emotional gratification from that. But do you really benefit? Does, does it make your life better? Are you going, oh, yeah, thank goodness that person's dead. If that person was alive, I'd be miserable. I mean, do you know how many other potential killers there are walking around? So this is a, you know, a bit more of a complex story that we have in Iran, but we see when the government gives you the option as a victim to say, you know what, I don't want this person to be killed, we get a better approx approximation, at least, of real justice that, that we might enjoy from a voluntary, peaceful, free market system. A high-profile campaign was launched by public figures, including Adele Ferdo Sapur, a popular football commentator and TV show host, and former international footballer Ali Dai appealed for the victim's family to forgive the killer. According to the UN, more than 170 people have been executed in the Islamic Republic since the beginning of 2014. Yeah, okay, so we got to put this in that kind of perspective. Uh, they do have this one little nice safety valve, but they do kill a lot of people for bullshit reasons in Iran. But then you step back, a little greater perspective, and you think of all the, uh, let's see, how many people have, has, uh, has Obama killed with drone strikes since uh, the beginning of 2014? Probably on the same par with that, but uh, there are a lot more victims of American imperialism than just those. Under the country's interpretation of Islamic Sharia law enforced since the 1979 revolution, murder and several other crimes are punishable by death, but the victim's family has the right to spare a convict's life in return for blood money under Islamic law, and certainly we can at least take one lesson in justice in this regard from Iran. Non-interventionism is the opposite of isolationism. How so? And so does every other person. No. Do you not support our military? Do you want to get nuked? Do you think the active duty troops supporting Ron Paul are, are nuts? Evidently.